Hey everyone, I'm really excited to have our guest on the show today. She is a best-selling author and creator of Create Six Figure Courses and The Launch Lab. And one of the amazing things I think about our guest today is that she has experience both in building her own very successful online courses in the six and seven figure range. And not just jumping into this recently, but having been doing this since I think as, as early as I got involved in the space, maybe even before me, uh, which is going back quite a ways. Uh, she has a background actually even in working with corporate clients, uh, but then also really understands the marketing side and actually making your courses successful. So she's seen everything from uh, the really sort of instructional design corporate space of creating courses that actually work all the way through to marketing them and making them successful. So uh, Janine Blackwell, I'm really excited to welcome you to the show today. And uh, I think I can learn a lot from you and, I'm, and I definitely think the people watching this can, can learn a lot from you about creating and marketing and being successful with their online courses. Hey Greg, it's, it's great to be here and hi everybody, how are you? Uh, yeah, super exciting and like a hot topic is probably our, obviously our favorite topic, online courses, so really happy to be here and jam with you on it. Excellent. Um, that's great. And so for people who want to check out more about uh, you, it is the best place to get a hold of you. Is that at uh, create six figure courses.com? And create six figure courses.com. Also Janine Blackwell.com. J E A N I N E Blackwell.com. And I Excellent. answer to I got one of those names, but I get called a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll we'll put the we'll put the links in as well. But the create six figure online course or create six figure courses dot com has a six as a number in it, uh, yes. so it's not spelt out that way. But we will uh, we'll share the links with everyone as awesome. part of the video. Excellent. Uh, so lots of good things that we could talk about. I've, you know, looking at everything that you've done and all the things that you've teach. And I know we've been in touch over the years. Um, it's so many different topics. So let's, let's try and pick a few that, uh, that you're excited about that you think are really important. Uh, one that you had mentioned was kind of narrowing down your course topic. And it's funny, we actually did a whole team retreat took all the staff here uh, up to Whistler, spent uh, three days in a, in a big house together and everyone built their online course. And I would say one of the biggest struggles initially was narrowing down that focus so that you could actually produce something of value in a reasonable period of time. Uh, so how do you go about kind of narrowing down the focus for your course and, and even yeah. why do you do that? It's tough, you know? I think it's tough because uh, for a couple of reasons. You know, I get to work with a lot of folks and like you do and um, you know, every year we're working with a lot of folks that come in and we do a lot of work online. We do a lot of work in getting in a room and trying to knock it out. And the first big hurdle is really figuring out, okay, what what is my actual topic of my course? Because I think one of the things that happens is that we start with this idea of uh, what do I want to teach? You know, so what do I want to teach? And the, the real question is, you know, how do I want to help people get a result? And if I can really zone in on that, question called how am I going to equip somebody my perfect person to go out and create a result it's the first step to really narrowing and, and you know I see it all the time I mean an example would be if, like social media you know like if you're looking at something like okay I want to, my topic what do I teach is social media uh, that's kind of a what orientation and when you get into the result orientation it, it can sound a lot different it's like okay well how am I going to help a certain audience create a certain result so it could end up same topic but it's really much more narrow it could sound like hey how do I how am I going to help small business owners find uh, clients online that's a really much more specific topic even though it's in the same category of uh content really and it's just it's hard because i think sometimes we're really just close to it the content we're teaching yeah and definitely uh, it's funny because we did we do some you know seo testing and what topics people are looking for and one of our least successful topics was how to choose a topic for your online course and i think it's that most people come in saying you know i'm in the hr industry so i already know what i'm going to teach i'm going to teach stuff about hr but it's really more than that right it's taking okay so you want to teach things say about hiring people well let's even narrow down that further in terms of we're going to actually show you how to um, you know hire only a players or we're going to actually show you specifically how to achieve that certain result so i love that results oriented approach totally, you're totally right and there's a reason that we it's not showing up as a huge search because you don't really know that that's the big question until you're in it and you start creating and and you hope that you figure that out right away that i've got to get narrow with my content because if i don't i get out and i start to market and I realized that if I don't have a clear result, this is gonna be really challenging to actually uh, produce a, a result through my marketing. And, you know, I have a lot of people, you know, in our, in our community, we got people who, yeah, they're, um, they could be teaching Six Sigma, Lean, 
ta tactics, they can be doing art, they can be doing um, developmental work. And a lot of times people will say, well, I'm not really sure, how do I define a result? Like the work I'm doing is really kind of inner transformation work, for example. Yeah. Everything has a result that's attached to it. And, uh, you know, one of the folks that run our community, she's a, a leadership coach. So if you think about like what you just said, that kind of broad, oh, I know what I teach. I teach leadership. I teach women leaders. Yeah, when she really got focused on just one result, her uh, first co course actually ended up being about how to have one type of coaching conversation and specific around how to have that conversation. It ended up being a, I think it was a four modules, a four week course. She uh, launched that in a launch lab. She had like in a 16 day window, she did almost $40,000 in sales with just that that really tight, tight, tight focus. And you know, she didn't have a list. It was like working in a really small uh, community. And I think that's, that's when you see that kind of result. It's almost counterintuitive. Like you think I'm gonna go really broad and yeah. I'll get everybody who'll be interested in this. Cause I'm gonna talk about leadership and that's everybody. And it's, it's just the opposite. Like the more specific you get, the more you can draw people into that and find your people. Yeah, that's great. It's uh, and you're right. It certainly makes a difference on the marketing and even then on, on actually focusing on creating your course as well, as opposed to wandering all over the place, teaching biology 101. Well, it kind of brings up another point, you know, because I hear from people all the time too, like, well, you know, I don't know. There's a lot of like one, one of the first things we do and, and I would advocate everybody doing is really going out and researching your idea, like seeing what else is out there and seeing. And if there are things out there, that's a good thing. It's a sign that there's a market for your yeah. course. And a lot of times it's like, oh God, somebody else did my idea. Well, no, that's a good thing that there's people doing it. Um, but you know, one of the things that comes back sometimes when you start to think about an idea, suddenly you start to see it everywhere and you think, oh man, there are people out here who are doing this for free. You know, how could I possibly deliver a course? Uh, when other people offer this for free. And I think that's kind of the point you're making, Greg, like, you know, a biology 101, nobody's really looking for that. That's like a bunch of information yeah. that we consume and hope one day we're going to use. But when we, we are looking for a specific result called, oh, I have stomach pain and I need to understand, you know, the biology behind that and what I need to do. There's a whole audience that will be very happy to have somebody else sift through all that information you know, and share it with them. So that's the key. It's not, uh, that's how you get around the free thing as well. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's uh, it's funny. You're, you're, so, you're so speaking my language. We need to talk more because all the things you're saying, I'm like, we just shot a YouTube video on this kind of area. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm, topic, I'm... Right? It's the real world <laughs> of what, what I think when you get in the psyche of creating, mm -hmm. um, you know, creating's not an easy thing, right? Mm -hmm. You're kind of, one, you're hold away for a while working on something and you're hoping that when you put it out, like there's going to be something besides crickets chirping, you know, you're going to have like a reaction and people are going to love it. Yeah. And, um, and you know, that's, it's not for the, the faint of heart, you know, it's like, you got to like kind of do the work and you put it out there. But I think that the key is just being really clear on who, who you're here to serve and figuring out if I had to say one question you could ask to like really get clear on the result is think about who your audience is and ask yourself, what is the big question they have that I could help them answer with what I know and with what I love to do? And, right. and that's it. Like you just do that and you, you're going to have a winner. And then, so we, we talked a little bit more about that kind of stuff and uh, focusing on actually building results into your course. So once you kind of have the concept of these are the results we want to get, how do you actually go about, um, you know, putting those results into the course and making sure you're going to achieve results in all of your, your content? Yeah. So the first thing, like narrow the topic, right? So we just talked about narrow the topic, get clear on the results you're going to create uh, with the work you're going to do with people you're working with. I think the key is that that result has to be the filter for all the content that you're going to be delivering. So think of it like I got my nice to have bucket and I have the need to have bucket. So we fall in love with our content. <laughs> it's like, you know, we, most of us tend to be, I call ourselves geeks in whatever it is that we're doing, right? So I'm a brain geek. I've got a lot, a lot of years of studying how people learn. Um, there are things that I'm so interested in that hardly anybody else would ever want to like get into, <laughs> right? You know, most of the people that I'm working with, they, they don't want to know all that. They just want to know how do I get the result? I want a great course that's going to be engaging. So when I'm looking at what I'm putting into a course, I have to say, well, you know, this is nice and I think it's really interesting, but do my people need to have this to get the result I'm promising? Right. And if you sort it that way, you end up with like a smaller pile that's the need to have and a really big pile that you realize is the nice to have stuff. And yeah. if you rip that out, you can get to the core and you can help people get 
where they want to go and fast. Because I think something we all have to um, recognize, you know, is that we are the learners that we're serving. So we are people who we want something short. We want something fast. We, if you can deliver the result for me and it only takes three modules, I'd rather that than 30 modules. Right. And, um, and, and recognizing that and delivering content that way can make it uh, not, not overwhelming, which is really critical and powerful for you. It's much easier for you too in delivering the content. Yeah, so, so it sounds like a big things there are uh, really making sure you're focused on that result, using that to drive the content, cleaning out the nice to haves and focusing on what you need to actually achieve that result. And in the end, having a shorter and being okay with having a shorter, smaller amount of content because we used to, we, we had a course that was uh, it's 16 hours of content in the mining industry that we helped someone set up. And uh, it's 16 very valuable hours and it's kind of, it actually is kind of mining 101. I think that's actually what it was called. Um, and it sold really well, did really well. But whenever you put the number of hours of content on the landing page for it, sales went down considerably because <laughs> people in the industry, you know, this was for lawyers and accountants and other people getting into the mining industry who wanted to learn all about working in the industry. And uh, they saw 16 hours and thought, ah, it's, I, I don't have time for that. But if you gave it to them, then they would end up working through it over the course of six months or a year and have it as an ongoing resource. So they were happy getting it if they didn't know how long it was going to take before they picked it up. Yeah, because it's a, it's a, I get that question, you know, it's kind of a myth like, um, Wow, I've got to have a lot of content to have something that's a higher investment course. And I'll have folks yeah. say, well, you know, if you want to do a 997 course, how many modules do I have to have? Um, that It really has nothing to do with that. I think it's about what the result is. And I think yeah, you're very on. much. <laughs> yeah. And I think I saw a, a, an example on your landing page for Create Six Figure Courses. Uh, and you'd mentioned, you know, having a, a course on, you know, how to how to do marketing versus how to get 10,000 new Facebook followers. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I think, you know, even in, in creating a high value course, that makes sense in that it, rather than raising the number of hours of content, raise the value of the result. So if your result is how to get 100 new Facebook followers or how to get 10,000 new Facebook followers, if you can actually get them to the 10,000 and that's the result right there, even if it's the same length course, you've created a higher value course by just increasing that result. Yeah, I totally agree. I totally agree. And I think that one of the things, I think one of the big uh, questions everybody has when they're creating is, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to invest my creative energy in, in putting this course together and when it's done, is it going to sell? Like that's really the big question. It, you can have the answer to that before you start creating and you should really. And I think that comes from really testing out is this result that I'm delivering something that's really important to the people I want to serve. And you know that and you define like to your example, Greg, okay, I'm going to help you get 10,000 you know, likes on your Facebook page, or I'm going to help you get your first five paying coaching clients. If you know that's really critical for that audience and you've already defined that that's the transformational result, that's the heart of your whole marketing plan. Mm -hmm. That's the heart of the whole launch. That's your ads. It's like the work that you do in the front end, getting clear on that result, is going to set you up to sail like really fast right into launch mode and finding your people mm -hmm. because, you know, we respond to things that are about a problem we have and we want to get an answer to it. And so how do you, I, I've heard lots of approaches, people have different approaches of doing a pilot course, doing a pre-launch, selling, selling a whole bunch of seats before you even build anything uh, and, and all sorts of different variations on the spectrum. I've, I've heard people getting very upset about that concept of selling before you create. Where do you land in that spectrum? How do you, how do you kind of confirm that that result is right before you invest a ton of effort into it? Yeah, I, um, well, I guess I should probably answer like two ways, right? One is, um, how do I do it? I, I involve my people as fast as possible in whatever I'm creating. That's mm -hmm. my goal. Like it's like the question our team is asking is how fast can we get the our people, our community involved in making this great? Um, and once you have a community, usually they're the ones that are driving the whole creative process because they're telling you what they want next, which is great. So the first yeah. hurdle really, I think, is the first product. It's you know it becomes a non non issue after you have the first product and people get results. Then they're going to say, hey, Greg, you know, my new yeah. question is this. When are you all going to create something on that? And it's easy. Um, so on that first product, it's really a question. And in our uh, community, when we're working on creating, what most of the people do is they do what we call a beta launch. Uh, a beta launch means you've got your content outlined, you're moving into to recording it. And let's say you've got a course that's like six weeks, seven weeks, so it's seven modules. And maybe you have three modules that are recorded in the can, ready to go, and you launch. So your people are consuming one module per week, 
they're on module one, you're recording module four. Uh, not for, for everybody, right? Because I have people, probably the same people you're referencing, Greg, who say, oh my God, there's no way, that's too stressful and you know, whatever. And so you got to know what your tolerance is for, um, for that. Right. But for what most people tell me is it was like the best thing they ever did because mm. once they got what they were going to do and they launched it, then they had people in there, one who were committed, who were excited about the content, who were asking questions and it motivated them to get everything else finished. That's one part of it. But the more important part is that those folks that are in your course are going to be asking questions and you can adjust. So if you didn't cover something in module one, you can go, oh, you know what? I can circle back and I can do that in the Q&A call or I can add a bonus tool or I can you know, put a new video in. Yeah. It allows you to not get so stuck on perfection because I do think, I really, really believe there is no way any one of us are going to create a product and perfect it on our own. And I know a lot of folks, you know, are sitting at home or they're at Starbucks or they're whatever and they're working on the 10th iteration of this course because somebody in a forum told them that this is what it should be. And the truth is it won't become what it could really become until you put it in the hands of the people who are going to experience it and they're going to give you feedback. And the truth is they're going to love it. Like my experience is people become invested and they want to help you make it better. And um, and trusting that process is the key to getting something out the door and, and making it a, a success. Yeah, that's great. That's an excellent process. And I definitely recommend people sort of take that to heart because you, uh, it's there's a concept too in software development of if, if what you're shipping out there as your first iteration of your product is something that you're truly proud of and you don't have concerns about it, you probably spent way too long on it before you put it in the hands of customers. So it was a great, I just literally today, I was reading um, Peter Diam Diamandis, uh, book bold and he's got a quote in there from somebody who who says the exact same thing if you're an entrepreneur and you have launched something that you're not just a tiny bit embarrassed by yeah. <laughs> at some level that you waited way too long to launch and I thought god that's so true you know because it's never going to be you're going to always look at it and go yeah. this could be better and it could and it's going to be yeah. and you know internally what uh, what's what's wrong with it I mean I look at even our platform that we've created at Thinkific and I think you know, internally we look at it and go like, ah, oh, there's so much we could do better and improve upon, but we put it out there and generally people who use it rave reviews, they absolutely love it. So it's a constant battle of just trying to take it to another level. And we never, we're past the point of sort of shipping product that is, you know, half built or partway there. Like the stuff we ship now, we're pretty proud of because we put a lot of effort in just because there's enough people using it now. I think that's an early days thing, but definitely in those early days, whether it's a course or anything else or product that you're getting out there, you should be putting it in their hands, but you can tell them, you can say, look, this is version one, I want your feedback. And that shifts the whole mentality of turning them from a critic into a partner, yes. uh, which just, you know, it'll increase your your positive reviews, positive feedback and experience. Yeah, and they become advocates, right? Because once exactly. they take it, they, they're, they, they feel a sense of partnership with you and yeah. then they'll go and talk about it with other people, which is exactly what you want. Cool. Great. Uh, so let's to quickly talk uh, free content. Uh, you'd mentioned free content. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah. So let's just like start the pot, right? Um, so I know I get asked this a lot. Okay. The question is when I offer free content, uh, should I hold my best stuff back? I guess that's like kind of the essence of it. And I think there's a lot of different schools of thought on that. I think one school of thought is, you know, never give people too much because if you give them so much, then they're just going to consume your free stuff and then they're never going to engage to work deeper mm -hmm. with you. Um, I think there's two things we got to think about. One, everybody here uh, has to embrace the idea that you you have to have profit in your business to have freedom. And I think a lot of us create a business because we want freedom. And then we find ourselves not really having that abundance because we haven't really also embraced the idea that profit is a good thing. So you got to like embrace that. Profit is a good thing. Your most important priority as an entrepreneur is cash flow, which by the way is a little different than profit, but you know, is the <laughs> revenue coming in this month? It's one of the first things you learn as you yeah. start. But um, you know, knowing that, I think the way to think about offering free content, and the only reason we should be offering free content is to give an experience of how we can help somebody create a result. You know, mm -hmm. your people, if they're looking at you as a potential guide, they're asking themselves, hey, can I learn from this person? And so if I go to your webinar and I go there to the webinar, you teach me something and it's really powerful and it's impactful and I take it and I run and I go apply it, I'm going to leave thinking, wow, I can learn from Greg. This is awesome. You know, I wonder what else he's got. Yeah. Uh, as opposed to the webinar, which is, I call it kind of the skim, you know, it's the skim, the surface, 
Yeah. And it's like, oh, there's 10 things that you really need to do. I'm going to tell you one and I'm not going to tell you the other nine. You have to come into my course to get that other nine. I mean, most of us, um, we've been around the online marketing block a time or two. And so we recognize that when that's going on and we're like, really, you know, yeah. I just bought an hour off of this and you're going to like seriously give me one thing. Yeah. Um, I, I think, hey, give your best stuff. Show up and, and play and say, look, I'm going to share with you this one thing, something you can go do right now. Mm -hmm. And if you do it really well, every time we learn something, it we answer one question, right? Mm -hmm. And it sets up a new question. So if you do it well, I'm going to have a new question. And I'm going to turn yeah. around and go, okay, this is great. You just show me, you know, how to optimize my whole Facebook page. Great. Right. This great in an hour. But now I don't know what content I need to put in this to start you know, attracting my people, or I don't know how to run ads, yeah. or I don't know how to do video. Like I have new questions and I'm gonna to come to you and say, can you show me how to do that? And that's when you invite them to do the deeper work. And I think if you think about it that way, um, first it's like coming from abundance, which I think is a really great place to be because yeah. operating from scarcity, mm -hmm. uh, it just affects every part of your business, you know, and giving a lot, it, it comes back to you. And I see that over and over again. Definitely. Yeah. And I think you kind of, you, you touched on a good point there too, is it, it essentially, the difference I see is when you, when you do that, I'll give you one thing, but the other nine, I promised you are actually hidden behind a paywall. Uh, the, you're creating a short term relationship. So you might be able to scrape away a bunch of sales in that instant transaction, but you're not creating a long term relationship. So you're, right. you're creating a short term business model for that product, not building that long term relationship where you give you give a whole bunch back. Now they trust you, they follow you. So some of the, I mean, the people I think of out there, yourself included, who give away a ton of great quality content, uh, they have long standing businesses where they're building a huge audience that keeps coming back to them. And you even mentioned it earlier in the call about how the first thing you do to create a product is you go out to your community and you're asking them and you have that community with that trust because you give away stuff and you're not just in it for that short, quick win. Uh, so that's, yeah, definitely another big, Big it is. Like, I, I think like we have to, one of the business decisions that we all have to make is are we going to be in the, the quantity business or the quality business? And, and, okay. I, and I mean that meaning, you know, am I going to be about going out always hunting for new customers mm -hmm. or am I going to find my people and go deeper and deeper with them? Right. Most of the people that I work with want to go deeper and deeper over time. Mm -hmm. and there's there's one uh, that's a whole different model. It means you get to do your teaching as yeah. the core part of your business versus going out and searching for clients. As the a marketing, yeah. That's kind of most of our people are looking to do that. Yeah. Uh, I also think that, you know, when you're looking at being in a quantity business, it sets you up for, you know, a day in the life is really different. You're constantly mm -hmm. going out trying to figure out what the new thing and where the new people are. Um, mm -hmm. Quality, quality is fun because, you know, yeah. you get to see people getting results with what you're doing over time. And, um, and it's much more profitable too, because you're not always going out to find a new client. Those clients become people that you're doing a relationship with over a long period of time. Yeah. And, um, and I know I have people, you know, who, who I've talked to in our space that, uh, who are quite amazed, you know, they look at our model and they're like, I don't understand, you know, how, how the revenue you're doing is that and the size of your community is this. And it's like, well, that, that's a quality of relationship. Right. Approach, you know, it's about getting in deep and being invested and working with people over a long period of time. And, yep. and that's the same thing you guys are doing. You know, it's like looking for, for folks that want to build something substantial over time and they become invested in, in the relationship with you. Um, there was, so what, this is, I got a kind of an interesting scenario on the free content side because I am 100% sold. I give away as much free stuff as I can. I mean, that's even what these interviews are about is creating more great resources to help people out. Uh, but so I, I, with my original course was on the LSAT law school admissions test, launched that 10 years ago. It still runs today, has a great audience, that, but it's very much uh, a one-time transaction and gone only because they take it, they take the test, they go to law school, they become a lawyer, they never come back and take the test again. <laughs> but in that space, I've given away a ton of free content on YouTube and great articles and emails, but we ran into this interesting scenario where my original free trial was, uh, it was about an hour and a half of free trial when well, you signed up you went to sign up for the course and you could take a free trial and take about an hour and a half of content free before you hit a paywall and uh, we looked at it and ex did some a b testing and cut that free trial down to 15 to 20 minutes and our conversion rates went up considerably 
because it was a shorter period of time before people hit it. So I still took all that free stuff and put it elsewhere on YouTube and everywhere else. But it was one of those weird scenarios where actually doing a little bit less for free. And I think it was not so much about less value or less for free. It was still really good stuff we were giving. It was just the time frame between checking out my course and having to make a purchase decision. Yeah. See, and I think that's, uh, it's a great illustration of what we were talking about earlier, that if you want to know the answer, go talk to your audience. And, and right. so, you know, what you were doing is talking to your audience. You tested it one way and you tested the other and your audience told you, this is the way that will help me take action faster. And that's how we think about it. You know, when we're thinking about, you know, selling, quote unquote, I know for a lot of us, that's just not the thing we really want to spend a whole lot of time on. It's kind of like the necessary evil to get to do the big work I'm here to do. I like to think of it as helping people make a decision on, on a result. Like, am I going to do this to get this result or I'm not? Right. And that's the only thing I'm trying to do in, when I'm having that conversation. So same thing here. You know, you're, you're saying, do you want to do this or are you not? And yeah. does it, a five minute, 10 minute allow you to make that action, you know, with more confidence or is it an hour and a half? I think sometimes the, it, when I say give great results and free content, that doesn't mean that you should be giving a disproportionate amount of your content out free. Right. You want to be really selective in what you're giving out because we get back to that really big, the enemy, I call it. It's, it's like our number one thing that we focus like that is our, and we had a poster on the wall, this would be it, but it's overwhelmed. Like we need some kind of like avatar for this, but overwhelm. Like if you overwhelm your people, even yeah. in free, like you give them so much, oh, I'm so generous. I'm going to give you 10 things you can go do. They're going to be like, oh my God, I don't have time for this. This is going to take me six months. Thank you. I'm going to go work on this. <laughs> and I'll come back, you know? And you're like, oh no, that's not what we wanted to do. Um, mm -hmm. So you got to like think, okay, what's going to be doable? What's bite sized? What's impactful? And what's going to lead me to immediately want to say, okay, I got to do this. What's the next step? Um, if not, you know, then we're not helping anybody because the truth is they're probably not going to go off and do it by themselves. Yeah. I think we might be guilty of a little of that between all our free blog posts and YouTube videos and interviews and courses and stuff that we put out there. I think occasionally we might be guilty of a little bit of overwhelm for sure, but. Uh, I, I love it because I love my stuff. You know, like the stuff yeah. you're into, you're into. You're like, oh, you'd like this too. Oh, you'd like this too. And then you get the yeah. deer in the headlights look and everybody's like, wow, thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And maybe that's, I think, where segmenting comes in really well, where you're just saying, you know, you're at this stage. I have 20 things that could help you. But if you're at this stage, just look at this one thing. Just start there and we'll worry about the rest later. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's great. Yeah. Amazing. And so this is a, a lot of this stuff, I'm guessing, and even and a whole lot more is the kind of stuff you cover in Create Six Figure Courses, right? We do. Create Six Figure Courses is about moving from, I've got an idea, yeah. so I need to test it. I need to get this thing out of my head into an outline so I can get it done and up mm -hmm. and launched. And, and that's where people are getting to that first beta. Uh, the launch lab is like uh, the next step. It's like I've got my my launch, I got my, my course out in the world and somebody's consuming it. And now, you know, I want to make it better. I want to drive traffic to it. I want to figure out how to, should I be doing blog posts? So, you know, what do I need to do to like fill this course and hit right. the revenue goals that I want? So that's what we're doing. It's kind of like what you're saying, like the overwhelm piece. Like the first part is you just got to get something out in yeah. the world and, and then, then move to the other stuff. Because I think sometimes the first place we go is we get distracted with all the things people tell us we need to be doing. Like you need right. a pipe, you need a blog, and you need a, no, <laughs> what you need is something that generates revenue. Like that's right. the thing. And if not, all the other stuff you're doing is, uh, is really busy work until yeah. you get clear on what the product is that you're marketing. Because what you can do, and I, and I think we've all been there, you know, is to do things that we're put, putting things out in the name of being productive and growing our list. And then when we finally market something, we realize, wow, I've been building a list of people who don't really even want what it is that I'm, <laughs> working, you know, so yeah. create it and build all that at the same time is really the key. Um, yeah, I think that that's, uh, that's a great way to look at it. Cause I think even when I got started, I almost accidentally took that approach of one thing at a time, whatever I could bite off just because for me, it was a part-time thing when I was getting going, I didn't have time. So I just did, you know, first I'll do this, then I'll do this. And, you know, for me, first I built the blog. Uh, because I didn't even know about online courses. This was a decade ago, right? Then I said, oh, hey, maybe I'll run ads. Ads was a total failure. <laughs> <laughs> like not, not where I'm running ads for something, but you know, where you drop on the Google AdWords onto your site or AdSense or whatever yeah. it was. And I think I made, you know, $12 or something. Then I went and said, oh, maybe I'll create an online course because actually that's what the audience told me I wanted. And then I went and worried about 
YouTube channel, marketing, more blogging, but it just happened to be that sort of one step at a time approach because that's all I had time for. So that's that's great that you're you're following that kind of approach in your that was, systems. Well, because that was like the necessity for me. I, I had a little different situation. You know, I was, um, I, I w had started my business and I was selling my time because that's what I, you know, knew how to do. So I was yeah. doing consulting to sell my time. And, you know, the more I grew it, the more time I was on planes and trains and whatever. And I, and, you know, I just decided one day I can't do this anymore. Like I can't do this. And I had to replace an income really quickly. So the thing was like, I, I did it out of kind of necessity. Like I didn't have the time to do, uh, I didn't have a website. I have a blog. I didn't have a podcast. I went straight to the course first, which I, it always like surprises people. They're like, well, did you have a list? I'm like, no, I had a hundred people. I had called, you know, out of connections I had, and that was my quote unquote list. I didn't even know what a list was when people were talking about lists, but yeah, um, that's what I did. And, and it was, I was at seven figures with that course before I went to have a website. Even I had a sales page for that course. Wow. And, and I, we just, we did a, we started our blog, like literally, I want to say 15 months ago, maybe, you know, like it wasn't a, this was not where our energy was. It, and yeah. I can I say that because, you know, you guys can do that too. I think like when you really look at it, what you need to do, the first priority is I need to create something, mm -hmm. put it out and get some people in that experiencing it. And it doesn't require that you have to have all that other stuff. I don't have to have a YouTube channel to do that. You know, everybody mm -hmm. could run a Facebook ad. If you knew what your result is, you could run a Facebook ad and have people in your course. And and I see people doing that from people who are teaching how to do abstract art to how to do coaching to how to do, you know, holistic dentistry. Like it, it your people are there. There's 1.65 billion active users on Facebook. It, it, I think like just worrying about all that stuff you got to create gets us in this habit of content creation, like really focused on creating content versus focus on creating revenue. And for most of us, uh, revenue is really the critical thing when we first start. You know, we got to get that rolling. Yeah, definitely. And once you do that, it makes everything else easier. Yeah, then, then you, you can, have, you know, have, then you have revenue to play with. You can put some into ads. You can, you know, buy a better video camera. All the things that you all wanted to do, um, yeah. as opposed to obsessing about that first. <laughs> yes, I agree. I yeah. totally agree. Yeah, great. this is great. We could probably go yeah. on forever and ever because there's like yeah. so much to talk about. But one thing I will say, if anybody has any questions about anything, um, feel free to comment, you know, here, and then I can circle back and be happy to answer anything and circle around to make sure everybody's you know, moving in that direction, really creating the results and figuring out. I think the biggest thing um, on our JanineBlackwell.com uh, homepage, we have a, a download that really speaks to how to work backwards from that revenue strategy of what it is you want to create. And I think that that's something I would encourage everybody to think about is, you know, who do I want to work with? What, what really do I need to generate to create that kind of freedom you were talking about, Greg? Because like, I think people get stuck in the tech rabbit hole and all this other stuff because they feel like they have to do all of that. Yeah. Um, you don't. What you, you you do is get a get choose to move quickly. Mm -hmm. um, get a few people. Could be five people in your first course. And let's say it's nine eighty seven. You make five thousand dollars. Now you reinvest that profit into Facebook ads or getting somebody to help you do the Facebook ads so that you're not all stuck in that. And yeah. and that's really the key. Moving fast. Well, thank you so much, uh, Janine. I really appreciate you coming to take the time to chat with us. For everyone watching, if you want to check out more about Janine or, or that download sounds quite useful, check out janineblackwell.com. Um, and that's J-E-A-N-I-N-E, -E, blackwell.com or create sixfiguresourcescom which has the number six in it. Or uh, the Launch Lab. Where's the Launch Lab at? Is that through Janine yeah, Blackwell? You can find it at JanineBlackwell.com, yes. Okay, excellent. Great. Awesome. Uh, great, guys. Thank you so much, Greg. It's awesome being here with you and your community and uh, great to be here with everybody. Thanks. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.